Hello, we are paramedics uh, with passion and we are now in uh, Glasgow in a uh, HMS uh, station. Uh, with us there is uh, Dr. Neil uh, Dignan, uh, the emergency medical physician. So, uh, Neil, you told us about the difference between the doctor's job and the paramedics. And do you have any additional equipment? So we do, yeah, absolutely. So the idea of our service is yeah. that we try, we can bring critical care yeah. to the patient. So we talked a bit about the trauma jobs. The other big um, sort of plank of our work is providing what we call secondary retrievals. So there's a number of remote and rural healthcare facilities in Scotland that are quite isolated and they don't have higher levels of care. So we might have to go into a place and basically provide mobile intensive care. Okay. okay. So our recipe is one vacuum mattress. Okay. I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Yeah. This is a standard mattress. Let me see. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with it. And we, because it's often cold and wet and rainy here, this is bubble wrap. Oh. Okay. So this goes inside the mattress. And we like this. And we wrap oh, around yeah. it. Yeah. So they use the bubble foil to uh, insulate the patient. Yeah. Right. And you don't you don't use a backboard. Are we a backboard? Yeah. No, not no, at all. Not at all? No, never. For, for how long? Uh, I don't know, five, 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 five years. Five, easily, five years, five okay. or six years. Um, the baby mattress, Yeah. Okay, which okay. we balance monitors and things like that, obviously for prolonged periods of time. We don't want pressure on unconscious okay. patients. And our vacuum mattress. Right. Now, we also recently have had to start stocking bariatric vacuum mattresses yeah. because people are just getting bigger. Getting bigger, yeah. Absolutely. The same situation in Everywhere, yeah. So we have that. Okay, so we have a medical pack. Okay. It's pretty heavy. Nobody wants to carry that. <laughs> and we have Do you have to carry this and that? Yeah, so we're a two man team, okay. so we carry the, the bags between us. So we have a medical pack and a monitor yeah. pack. And then the monitor pack will basically have at least two syringe drivers oh. or drug infusions. Okay. So they are packed inside Into the, the monitor pack. Okay. Pack. And also one ventilator. Okay. We have a iStat. Have you seen them before? So no. it's a point of care no, blood no, machine. We don't know. Yeah. What's that? So this is Star Trek stuff, I suppose. Yeah. So cool. you, you basically fire this up. We have two of these machines. Yeah. Um, they're pretty good. They're a little bit temperature sensitive, actually. You know, they're not very good in the cold. But actually, you can put a drop of blood on a cartridge yeah. and put it in, and you can get a blood gas analysis. Okay, so this is a critical blood gas analysis. Exactly, yeah. So we can Great. carry this with us, yeah, right. and, and, and use that. And you can use different cartridges. You know, you can get cartridges that will do troponins, that will do D-dimers, that will do give you a coagulation screen, for instance, or measure an INR. I think uh, uh, <coughs> also there is a X price uh, started to uh, do stuff like Star Trek I uh, <laughs> there's a there's a price for from some company that oh, really? yeah. it's called X price for the tree coder. Uh -huh. So this is stuff like the, the tree coder from the start. Yeah, track. this is the this is the start, I suppose. <laughs> um, okay. other things we would bring, so a monitor. Okay. okay. So a monitor. Can uh, that monitor perform the transcutaneous spacing, spacing and the and fibrillation? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we can do all of those things. So it's all multi multi-purpose. Oh. And a there you go. A, Portable ultrasound machine. Oh, we, okay. we know, we know, you know one, these, yeah. yeah, one of these. So we have two of those as well. Can I open? Yeah, uh, well that's it out. This is just the probe and, yeah, and yeah, the it's casing. Yeah. So we bring that and then we have a number of optional extras that we would bring depending on the job. So we would bring, always bring a drug bag for instance, yeah. okay, with all of the drugs we would require. And how does it differ, Neil, from the usual, because we saw that there's a EMT uh, drug bag, mm -hmm. there's a paramedic drug bag mm -hmm. and there's cardiac arrest drug bag. Yeah. You have a doctor's drug bag? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. And inside the doctor? Um, so <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's, it's much bigger and it's much much and more extensive, I suppose. What do you need? Uh, what do you use for the uh, uh, RSI, for example? <laughs> As an emergency physician, yeah, uh, I am very much coming around to the idea that we should probably be using ketamine for probably okay. every single RSI. Do you have only ketamine? No, we don't. We have a we have etomidate. Okay. And we have propofol as well. 
and we also carry L-fentanyl and okay. Sux and Rocky Williams. Um, but yeah, uh, our service is made up of half and half of emergency physicians and half intensivists. Okay. okay. The emergency guys generally are very much like ketamine, 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 ketamine. and the intensivists are more like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay. You know, so. And uh, there's an issue about ketamine uh, that you cannot or you shouldn't administer it uh, if there is a head injury. Okay, um, that's uh, a very interesting point. Yeah. Um, my, my colleague downstairs who's on with me has yeah. just written a sort of dissertation about this. Oh. I don't think the, the, the evidence to suggest that that is a contraindication to the use of ketamine is extreme, oh. extremely weak and historical. Weak. And I think much like um, cervical, cervical collars, it yeah. will be placed in the, the dustbin. Sure. Yeah. So. I read it about it uh, also. So yeah. There, there are some some evidence that it do, does not increase the intracranial yeah. pressure at all mm -hmm. if you are keeping uh, very well the ventilated patient. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Could you tell us about some really interesting case? Yeah. Um, that is a very you put me on. That's a very difficult question. Yeah. You know, I, I've been working <laughs> for tw twenty years in emergency medicine, and I only do this. I've done this. So this is part of my job for eight years. Uh, I, I will say this genuinely, and you'll be surprised to hear this because I know about your backgrounds and people who work in emergency um, care and all the rest of it often get off on the buzz and all the extreme things and all the rest of it. Genuinely, as part of this service, I think some of the most rewarding stuff that you do is that we field probably 400 advice calls yeah. from practitioners in remote and rural areas of Scotland okay. who are working by themselves. Okay. They're in complete isolation, you know, geographically isolated, no colleagues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the ability to provide them with even remote support, I think, is a hugely influential thing that we can do. And actually, another thing that we do, I think, which is massively important, is sometimes you'll go to a place for a retrieval job, and you will make the decision that you think that person is not going to survive, and then you make that decision to keep them with their friends and family, rather than take them away to a big centre in a big yeah. city. And I think that's a, a massively rewarding aspect of what we do. Not all this running around in jumpsuits in yeah. helicopters with ketamine sometimes. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> and most funny case? Most funny case? This is deadly serious business, my friend. Deadly serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you for the interview. No, thank you, guys. Thank you. It's really nice, nice to meet you. Thank you. Meet enthusiasts. <laughs>